Welcome, everybody. I'm Ted Pedromo. This is Social Selling Wednesday, and we're filling in for Bob Woods, who's on vacation. And we have Bryn Tillman with us, and Michael DeGroot's going to be joining any second. Hi, and Ted. How are you today? Good. How are you doing? Oh, excellent. Great to see you. So we have lots of good topics. There's always something to talk about. And here comes Michael. Hi, Michael. Hey. And I see Arthur's here. Arthur, if you have questions, just go ahead and type in the chat or you can jump into the seat at any time. And Ooh. Bryn, you want to introduce yourself and then Michael can introduce himself. So I'm Bryn Tillman, one of the co-founders of Social Sales GPS and Chief Learning Officer at People Links and love LinkedIn and social selling. That's all. Don't we all? No. <laughs> at least the ones in this room. And welcome. Hi, Michael. So hey. So tell us about you. Okay, I'm also a co-founder of Social Sales GPS and also run my own business called Staying Alive UK. And I call myself a storyteller. You are a great storyteller. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. That's and me. Ted, you? I am the author of Ultimate Guide to LinkedIn for Business, Ultimate Guide to Twitter for Business, and I do online advertising and social media for lots of companies. Awesome, our advertising expert. I don't know very much about the online advertising world, so I love to learn from you. But today we're gonna to talk about ProFinder, you said, right? Well, I want to talk about that because I've been, since the beta, I've been on over a year. Right, because you're California. That's right. Yeah, and they so called you me from Kansas priority. City. <laughs> they called me from Kansas City and said, hey, we found your profile. <laughs> Wow. Okay, so tell us what you know, and then I'll tell you what I think they need to do to make it better. Okay. And for those of you who don't know what ProFinder is, it's a new service, relatively new service. I think it's officially launched now. Mm -hmm. Whereas a, no, it's not in the UK yet, though. I think it's only in the US. Yeah, just US. Mm -hmm. So what they, you can do, I'm a contractor or a consultant. I pre create a profile, and mine's focused on marketing and advertising. And if people have projects, they can post the project and I can bid on it. And they only take the first five bids, which is kind of interesting. So you gotta be really quick. Where I am, sometimes mm -hmm. I'll see them an hour later and they're already full. That's one of the downsides. That's also a downside for the person that's putting the bid out. Right. Right. So here's my philosophy. If someone can get to that bid right away, that means that they're not busy. So they may not be the best ones to do this. They're trolling ProFinder all day waiting for an alert. Just saying. Yeah. So yeah, that's a that's a shame that they limit that. And what's frustrating is a lot of the projects I get, it'll say I need ongoing marketing and advertising support. And then I'm supposed to put an hourly wage dollars. or a fixed price for the project. I don't know how long it is. I don't know what the tasks are involved. So I've and tried you can't submit it without a dollar amount. Right, or an hourly wage. So I've tried both. I just kind of put one out there. And actually, last week I put one in for twenty dollars an hour, just to see if they would respond. I've never had anyone respond to any of my requests that my bids. So I got one job from Profinder, which was great. But guess what? They can't go in and say that they hired me. They can only say they declined me. Wow. That's crazy. See, that would be good so, to see who bid on it, what the price was, or what they they submitted, so we could tailor our bids for that way. Yeah. So I, the one bid I got was literally for a LinkedIn makeover. That was simple. I could tell them how much it was. It was easy. Yeah. The ongoing projects, or even any of the projects, there's not an there's not even an area to ask enough questions to be able to bid on it. So I don't think they really understand. I think the concept of ProFinder is awesome, but I think it is so in its infancy that I can't even see how it can work. Right. Who designs these things? Honestly. LinkedIn. LinkedIn. I mean, honest to God, are they not getting it that they need to find users who know how business works <laughs> rather than just program something and go, well, let's put it out there. Honestly, right, right. I, I find it incredible. And it's so disappointing because it could be an awesome concept, right? It could be really, really good. But there are always these little things that are missing that they haven't finalized. I'm sorry to be negative, but 
it's disappointing. It really is. No, it's really because there's millions of consultants on LinkedIn looking for work. They're trolling LinkedIn trying to find projects. Mm. And this is a huge tool. This would, could even get a lot more paid subscriptions if they played it right. Mm, absolutely. Right? They, just, they have great ideas. They don't execute it. So they need yeah, us. Yeah, and you know, I, I always, and it would be great. What you had one, maybe it was you, Ted, that said that there was an RFP site out there that's really good. No, I um, didn't. I didn't say it. One of our groups said it. Somebody from our group said it that, um, Maybe this is, I, yeah, this is government. I'm just looking for it. There's a site out there they said that's really awesome. And I have to go find it because, <laughs> but um, so I, it was like an RFP site. Hmm. Anyway, that they said that the, um, the system was perfect. Like the way perfect. that they submit it, the way you can find it. Um, and I wish I could remember who said it. Maybe it was Beth. I can't remember. <coughs> but, um, so the point is that there are sites out there all over the place that are already doing this without the power of LinkedIn. So, and I don't know, I'm sure for, you know, 20, 30 million, they could buy an existing one and like right. they did with SlideShare. And I mean, I know that sounds like, but you know, they're worth 26 point, whatever, 2 billion or 1 billion right now, you know, buy, ra rather than trying to invent this from scratch, it might make sense to buy an RFP site that's already existing. That's what companies do now. Well, and, and ProFinder, I think, has the most potential of anything LinkedIn launched, including Pulse, including, like, I think ProFinder, when you look at LinkedIn having two roles, one is for recruiting, and one is for sales. Mm -hmm. This will and end right now. Recruiting is, I don't know, 80, 90% of their revenue. I'm not sure what the number is, but it's huge. This could actually double, triple, quadruple the sales revenue. Yeah. Um, and they can even say you need to be on Sales Navigator in order to have access to profile, right. to ProFinder. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how many consultants out there would spend the hundred dollars a month to have that access? It's a no brainer to have people come to you with requests. It's your marketing. If you don't want to spend a hundred bucks a month on marketing, you're crazy. Right. Exactly. I just tried to share profile in this link, but it doesn't seem to pull in a picture. Uh, in case somebody wanted to. It does. Yeah. Bring you to Profinder. Good job. Did you see that email from Vivica yesterday with that? I, I, I signed up. So did I. <laughs> they had yeah, a good so survey. I gave them some it good was feedback. Good. <laughs> did you, when it asked you, um, are you currently looking for a position? Did you say you're open to opportunities? No, I didn't. I said, I'm fine. <laughs> so I said, the only reason I did is I felt like if I say I'm fine, then they're going to discount. I don't think like the I survey thought. answers mattered at all. They accepted me right away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Which survey okay. is this? Um, well, I'll go get the link and give it to you, but you can be a LinkedIn advisor. You, uh, you, right. you yeah. actually apply to be a LinkedIn advisor. That's probably USA as well. I, but I think you should give it a shot. I, I'll send over the link in a minute. I'm going to go find it. Yeah. Okay, so ProFinder is working progress, right? It's It's a long way from being right, but it has potential. Huge potential. Hmm. So yeah. anybody at LinkedIn is watching this replay, please get in touch and let us help you get it right. We'll come down to your office and show you all the things. You're leaving so much money on the table. Yeah. Yeah. Between that and the advertising platform, where it takes almost a week to get your ads approved. Still? I actually was getting them, some of them within a couple hours, and then some the next day would take six days so it's very random but that is, that's crazy yeah so hopefully microsoft will look at these low-hanging fruit and say look we could triple our revenue just by doing this how do we get on their radar well twitter worked really well when i was not you know i couldn't get the ads approved i said hey linkedin i'm trying to spend 2500 a day and you're not 
approving my ads and they approved them within an hour. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So they are watching. Yeah, I, I think Twitter, for me, is the best customer service experience that I get nowadays. Any tickets to support engines just do not work very well at all mm -hmm. because you get template responses and people don't communicate with you. Whereas on Twitter, they have nowhere to hide and because they can look at your profile and know that you're a credible individual mm -hmm. and that you talk about different things, they immediately have a level of trust that they're willing to have a conversation with you. Right. I had this with Skype. I uh, never needed to log in or I haven't logged into Skype for, for years on the website, right? And I, I didn't know what my password was because I never need to put it in with when you open Skype. It's open straight away. And I had to reset my password and I had to fill out a form where I had to answer what year did I sign up for Skype and which location was I in when I signed up for Skype. Well, this was 2005 probably when I signed up for that for Skype. Anyway. But when I went onto Twitter, I had an immediate, and it just went round and round in circles and didn't get anywhere. When I went on Twitter, they solved it within a few hours for me. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, Microsoft I, I, now too. I'm sorry. That's Microsoft. Maybe. I know exactly. So exactly, I know, mm -hmm. and that's why I was so frustrated because they kept saying, "We're really sorry, but you really have to give us the answers that you don't know the answer to before we can release your password." It was mad. It, I've never had to fill out. And of course, I was thinking, oh, my God, this is the way LinkedIn are going to go, too, <laughs> you know. So it was But Twitter. When I got in touch with them on Twitter, they were really apologetic and they solved it really quickly. I feel like LinkedIn's help, Twitter help, particularly slash cat, if you ever get her K-A-T, is amazing at getting right. this stuff done. Amazing. And then, and you never get, this is a known problem, <laughs> you know, right. you yeah. never get that ridiculous. So, I mean, I had a problem for four months where I could not update my Twitter, my Twitter handle for four months. I couldn't update it. Wow. And I, you know, and I, I, and they, they tried to close the, the help ticket. I'm like, you're not closing this ticket. I know. Yeah. I, like, I need this to happen. And I finally tweeted it out after four months and it was fixed in two hours. Great. Wow. So if they can do it, why can't they scale that? Right. Yeah. I feel like LinkedIn help desk is evaluated and maybe even bonus based on the wrong criteria. Like how, how quickly, I'm gonna guess, how quickly a ticket is opened and closed mm -hmm. matters, how fast yeah. they close the ticket, not yeah. how well they answer the question. And I understand like in a scalable world, these are the things we want, but I think about 90% of customer service should be based on the feedback they get from the customers. Yeah. Does that, how how can you rate someone doing well? I can quickly open and close and not serve. Mm -hmm. But they're not, I don't think they're thinking big picture. Yeah, because social media can really get you if you don't pay attention to it. Some, yeah, I, yeah. It's had that experience recently. It's like they didn't want to help me as clear. They didn't know how to fix the problem. So they kept saying, let me talk to my supervisor. And then they get back. Well, we don't really know what's going on. And they try to close the ticket. And I said, no, we need to fix this. Someone yeah, else has it. Yeah. yeah. So it's amazing. Amazing. But it is what it is. And I think I mean, we none of us have ever experienced growth at a rate like LinkedIn had and what that's like. But I do think they're at a point now specifically because they have money even to spend to fix this, right? They got a cash deal. So this is fixable stuff that a small investment can really go a long way. Mm -hmm. So, 
Yeah. So if you were so Microsoft, we can... if you were Microsoft, what was the first thing you would do with LinkedIn? To... Integrate it into Outlook immediately. Aren't there the plugins first... that do that? I was used one a few Not years ago. Well. Yeah. So Reportive in Gmail does a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. But I would absolutely integrate it in to Outlook and have a cap like after 100 emails now you get it if you want to continue it you have premium I mean I'm looking from a business standpoint how I would do that right um, yeah, I mean if that's so going to happen isn't it yeah oh I would think but you know who the heck even knows what they want to do maybe they're gonna focus on on dynamics and not out at all hmm. I don't know that's the second thing I do is I would completely integrate Dynamics and LinkedIn so yeah. that when you buy Dynamics, it is not it is a full box. Right. Like it's, you know, do an advanced search and we will fill your list with leads that we will feed you every single day inside of Dynamics that you can take notes on and have follow-up tasks on. And so that would be day two. With <laughs> complete social media profiles and phone numbers. And they have all that information if they just pulled it all together. Well, even if they don't do, it, it may be just inside of Dynamics, now you have the name and the company information and they pull in um, like a company <coughs> phone number. I don't know that I'd be comfortable, I'd have to think it through, that with Dynamics you're now getting people's emails that did not connect with you. Yeah. But it could, I mean, it should bring it in immediately for all your first degree connections. Right, that's what you know I was that. saying. Thank yeah, you. yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, on first degrees. Yeah. Um, but even the second degrees, it pulls it in and it'll feed up as an opportunity inside of Dynamics that says go connect with this person or here are the five people that you have in common, go ask for an introduction and have that introduction automatically go through Dynamics. I, they would absolutely blow Salesforce out of the water right. if they could do that. Yeah. It's inevitable that the project that this will open up for Microsoft is the whole kind of artificial intelligence arena, mm -hmm. you know, where things are going to be done automatically without us having to do the heavy lifting. Right. And, you know, with a few clicks, you can get so much information and automatically does it for you. Yeah, there will be a price premium attached to it. And equally, it's it's so important now with the way the world is going that people need things quickly because they haven't got time to do all the searching through those databases because they're so large now. Right. Yeah, absolutely. But one of the things that Dynamics, and I, I just, I met with the person that represents Dynamics for the first time in years and years and years. Um, and I wanted, I said to him, what's the difference between Dynamics and Salesforce? base level and AI is one of the big pieces inside of Dynamics that Salesforce doesn't really have. So it will, based on your database, recommend stuff. Like it's it already has a little bit of that AI in, embedded in it. Yeah. So I agree with you, a little bit of LinkedIn will go a long way with Dynamics. And I think that they can eventually, for so let me back up for a second. Outlook and Office still rule the world, business world, period. There's nothing, I mean, I'm on a Mac, but I have Office for Mac because you can't live without it uh, in the business world. And yeah, I'm in Google Docs a lot, but it's, still, it's not the same. It doesn't have the same capabilities and it's just not the same as Office. So. I don't know the percentage, I'm going to guess 95% of the businesses in the world are an office-based business. Would that make sense? Yeah. Right? But a they have percentage. such a teeny, teeny, teeny sliver of the CRM. Mm -hmm. And I think two things. One, if maybe Dynamics Light is available in a monthly package for individuals. Yeah. 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 Um, like an individual license. Like I, I got my husband a computer over the weekend and I think I'm spending $7 a month for office for him. Something that he does <clears throat> really well. But it's great, it's reoccurring revenue for them. I can't ever cancel it, right? Like you, you own that forever. But maybe a $20 a month 
you have this dynamics license and you can run your business and everyone can have a CRM. Yeah. Right. And then at $70, maybe if you have the whole package, you know, maybe it's not navigator, but you now have premium connected and it just all runs through this office license. Yeah. And I mean, I think there could be some real power behind that. Um, and when it's all integrated like that, for example, right now if, in Salesforce, if you want to email through Salesforce, it's through Salesforce. Mm -hmm. But if you want to email through Dynamics, it will open, if you choose to, it will open up in your Outlook. Yeah. And it will record in Dynamics. That's beautiful. Yeah. Right, because yeah. I don't want to live in my CRM all the time, but it would be great if every single email linked to my CRM. Mm -hmm. And I know Salesforce has plugins to Outlook, but I've seen it and it's cumbersome. And it doesn't really work well, so. Yeah, we anyway. use Dynamics at a software company I was working with. And they, every time you fill out a web format right into the CRM, every time they went to a website, you knew where they went on the website. Every it's sales Outlook. call, yeah. It's a great, but nobody knows it. And here's the problem, yeah. the challenge. Go ahead, Michael, I'm sorry. No, I don't know it. You're right, I don't uh, know it. It's awesome, but here's the challenge. Every, oh, every plugin app for CRMs has been developed for Salesforce. Mm -hmm. Very few people ah. even develop for Dynamics. So PeopleLinks happens to have developed for Dynamics because of one client, which was great. Um, but most, like if you look at some of the really powerful plugin things, like, I don't know, Sales Loft, I, I shouldn't speak because I'm not sure that I know for sure, but I know a lot of them are just for Salesforce plugins. Sure. When I went to AAISP in Chicago, which is inside this American Association for Inside Sales Professionals, yeah, I think that's it, um, you know, every single vendor in the room was a Salesforce.com vendor. They all connect. Nobody was talking about dynamics. Nobody talks about sugar, you know, so. Yep. <clears throat> and I'll tell you the best social CRM out there is Nimble. Mm. I would love to see, I'd love, well, I'm sure John Farrar would love to see this too, but I'd love Microsoft because they're missing that link and even LinkedIn isn't enough to do that. Nimble is like the most incredible social CRM that you it pulls in like pictures of vacations, <laughs> if you wow. wanted to see what people were doing, right? Like, no, that's I, scary. I've used, I used Nimble a few years back for about three, four months, mm -hmm. and it was full of bugs. It was dreadful. Mm, I think they've cleaned it a lot, up a lot since then. I, I you bet must they have, have been... but it really put me off, Nimble. Oh, too bad. It's yeah. phenomenal. It really is a wonderful product. I mean, they have free trials. You might want to try it again. I love that it lives right in Gmail. Mm. That's that's what I use. But. Sure. So Nimble and Reportive, I think, are two powerful things. But Nimble won't do everything that like a Dynamics will do. So I would love to see all the functionality of Nimble inside of a Dynamics. This is the thing I, I sense. You know, there's a lot of great products out there but nobody actually does exactly what we would like it to do. <laughs> you know, it, there's always, it's like moving house. You know, when you move house, you found the house you've fallen in love with, but there is always a compromise somewhere, right? Right. So the yeah. kitchen, okay, I'm going to have to redo the kitchen, or we're just going to have to put up with that, that, you know, the yard isn't quite how we want it, and we're going to have to change it. Or Yeah, what, I have the pink and black tiled bathroom. That's it. That's mine. <laughs> nice. Uh, it's still that my way. Daughter, right? My daughter, just a side note, my daughter does not want me to, she's like, it's back, it's retro, it's awesome. I'm like, oh God, she's like, don't change it. It's in great <laughs> condition. I'm like, oh my God. Oh God. It gives you a headache every time you walk into it. Oh, so, it's like Pepto-Bismol pink. <laughs> wow. I don't know what that means. Anyway. Oh. It's the stuff you drink when you have a stomach ache, the pink. Uh, okay, yeah. So anyway, it you. so these products going away from bathrooms, yeah. uh, bathrooms, uh, 
with with uh, all these products you know they're great but there's something missing and oh if we could only have that with that product as well then it would be perfect and this is this is everywhere it's like everywhere. that honestly it's like that everywhere i haven't seen i haven't used one product that i'm a hundred percent happy with i'm always going well why the, are they doing this bit with it mm. yeah Try to think if I'm 100% happy with any one product. Or you find a good product and then they get acquired and then it disappears. Uh, yeah. 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 So anyway, I had a question for you because um, we're talking social sales, social selling, and we tend to default towards LinkedIn in our discussions. And we talked about Twitter. But let's talk about the subject of social selling because even though it's a term that's been around now for a few years, some people still don't fully understand it. So let's, who, who could sum up perhaps one of the things, one of the pillars of social selling? What, what would one, I know there are like LinkedIn says there are four different pillars. Yeah. And, or even if there is a different one, not the ones that LinkedIn suggests, which one for you is really key? I have my four. Go ahead. Should I start? Okay. Yeah. So, oops. My first one is social selling. It, it starts with the ability to listen and, I, and find really great insights that your industry is talking about, your prospects are talking about, your clients are talking about, your clients' industry is talking about, really great opportunity to get inside the heads of the people that you want to engage with. So listening, I think, is the first piece. The second piece, I think, is um, positioning yourself. So this is your profiles, your content, um, like the out outward brand amplification piece as the thought leader and subject matter expert. So I think that that's like foundationally the second piece. The third piece I think is absolutely prospecting, gaining access to decision makers through warm introductions, through people that engaged in your content, with your content, through new connections, and taking it from online to offline conversation. And then the fourth piece is nurturing them through that sales cycle. So it's, and I guess that kind of can fall back onto the prospecting piece and thought leadership, but I think there's a point where staying in front of someone intentionally, sending them good content, putting it on a good cadence. And so we, you mentioned we talked about LinkedIn, but you know, how are you engaging on Twitter as well? Are you following them on Instagram to see where they're going on vacation, which sometimes gets creepy, but still part of social selling. Um, and are you finding insights about their industry that have nothing to do with what you do, but sharing it to stay in front of them and to be relevant to them? So those are the four major areas I see social selling. Could you just, sorry, because I, I was making some notes. Could you just repeat the second one? Um, it's positioning. Yeah. So it's profile branding and the content that you put out there and really putting your brand out there as that subject matter expert or yeah. thought leader so that you've positioned yourself as the go-to person. And that's profile and it's your content. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, that's not a million miles away from the four pillars that LinkedIn talk about, is it? Um, I don't remember what they are. For yeah, well, yeah, I don't remember theirs. The second mine, mine, mine were published first, by the way. Of <laughs> Yours are better. <laughs> I, I know that. So the first one is your second one, which is create a professional brand. Uh, today's world of B2B buyers are very selective and will only work with vendors they can trust. A strong professional brand shows you are an active participant in your industry. It leads to more inquiries from prospects. It leads to more responses to your communications. And it's one that is very much undervalued, I believe. Mm -hmm. And your and your 
third one is their second one, which is focus on the right prospects. Mm -hmm. uh, social selling enables you to find and connect with prospects more effectively than traditional sales. Mm -hmm. Over 76% of buyers feel ready to have a social media conversation and identifying prospects that meet your established criteria, such as role, function, industry, and with LinkedIn, it's never been easier. Yeah, true. And your number one is their number three, oh. which is engage with insights. Position well, no, yourself. My number one is listen. Oh, listen. And you did say insights as well. Well, but, to gain insights on what they're talking about. Okay. Okay. Right. So my number, my content and positioning, I think is combining their prospect, their their brand. Mm. Yeah. yeah. For me, yeah. it's it's the, your story. It's the content. I, I'm sort of bringing those together. I could separate them out though. Mm. So, so number three is engage with insights. Position yourself as a subject matter expert by sharing relevant industry content, commenting on news alerts, building your professional brand again. Mm -hmm. um, and salespeople can enhance their thought leadership by staying up to date with prospect news, identify new contacts or decision makers when accounts make key hires. So that's the whole looking at what activity is going on in the organization, I guess. And number four is build trusted relationships. Uh, build trust with prospects by sharing your perspectives, helping provide, this is the nurturing, I think, helping provide relevant information to common pain points, have genuine conversations and focus on the needs of the prospect first, selling second. Good. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. I, I, what is it missing? Uh, mm, good question. I think that what's missing to a point, I believe, is what is the outcome? I know, I know, I know that ultimately we want to you know, sell something to the individual. But I think it's, you know, what's the outcome at the end of the yeah. day? What, so, what are you looking to achieve? What is the goal? I agree. And that, that I totally agree. And I think the words that are missing are converting them from an online relationship to an offline. Yeah. From online Getting to offline. A think, conversation. Yeah. And I think that's the success of social selling. So, and this, where, this is where I think social sales GPS can help people because, you know, our, our strap line is grow, mm -hmm. position, and sell. That's right. There yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. but, you know, I, I think the interesting thing is, um, and, I, and I get from my clients all the time, well, do you guarantee? I said, look, I have no idea if your product is any good. I have no idea if the world needs your service, if you're competitive, I don't know. But what I will tell you is if you follow what we teach you, you will attract the right people, teach them through insights, and engage them and get them to want to have a conversation. What you do right. after that, I have no control over, right? That's up to you. So I do think that the, the secret or the, the, the success of social selling should be based on, are you getting more phone calls with the right decision makers? Yeah. I think. Yeah, the, the biggest yeah. thing I see people doing wrong is they have a blue widget and they just start shouting on social media. I have a blue widget for sale, right. come buy it. Instead of listening and say they want a red widget and give them what they're asking for. I mean, they don't sell it to them, build that relationship. It's a, it's absolutely amazing to me. I actually had a LinkedIn expert who I will not name because I actually like him a lot. Um, not one of us, but a LinkedIn expert that reached out to me that said he had 12 month financing for his, for his, um, if we signed up right now for his training class, if I signed up right now for his training class and it was like, through an infusion soft, so said, Bryn, good news for you. 
I have 12 months financing for you. I actually replied, I'm like, I'm not sure you meant this for me. He goes, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. But I obviously went to his home group. But um, but I, I'm like, like I, to me, that is not exactly, it's not like I ever raised my hand and said I'm interested and then told you I can't afford it. <laughs> like, right. So to start with, you're prospecting with I have financing and you don't even know, I, I don't even know what you're offering. I don't even know, you don't know if I have a need was crazy. But right. this is about people being desperate and they, they, yeah. they're they constantly thinking, I need the sale, I need the sale, I need the sale. I I, I had a great one the other day and um, shall, I'll read it to you if I yeah, may. I, I should get mine up too. because this, this one says, hi, Michael. This is an email, right? We're not personally acquainted, but you recently connected with my colleague on LinkedIn. So it's not even the person that connected with me on LinkedIn. It's his colleague. Oh my God. I'm writing this email as a personal favor to Sam Alley, who's the CEO of London VIP Group, a company focused to provide and cover every travel and leisure need in London, such as chauffeur services, hotel reservations, security arrangements, private aviation, yeah, I definitely need that, and more. I've been a friend of Sam and his client for several years now. If that's not too much to ask, could you check this his website? And if this is of interest, please send your inquiries to, you may quote, blah, 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 get 10% discount. Please let me know if you need any more information. So I responded to this guy and I said, seriously, <laughs> this is what you're doing? I said, may I ask who your colleague's name is? I didn't say so I can disconnect from him. Mm. Needless to say, I never got a response back. Of course. Uh, I mean, seriously, that's all I said. Seriously, this is what you do with a LinkedIn connection? So I know... You know, at some stage, we're going to have to have a discussion about, you know, business, doing business. But within a couple of days of connecting with somebody, just if anybody's listening out there, watching this and replay, please do not or please avoid doing that. <laughs> please avoid. I have a certain right, company I, pursuing. I got it. mine up. You want to hear yeah, this one? Yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. go for it. I, I, realize, I mean, he's a LinkedIn trainer, but this is more marketing plan. But hello, Bryn. My financing company, Synchrony, is offering 36-month financing on any marketing project you do with me before the 4th of July. This was sent July 5th, by the <laughs> way. Normally, the longest term is 12 months. I don't know when this deal will end, but I would act fast if I were you. He's the owner of the business. He doesn't know when it's going to end. If you want to talk about LinkedIn marketing, just respond to this email and I will call you to talk about it. To give you an idea, my team normally gets an AROI for our clients within 90 days. LinkedIn marketing is by far the best decision you will ever make for your business. Okay. Yay. Please, can I have his number? Did you do the 12 month financing? I know. Like, I don't even know what to, like, like, I don't know anything about this. And I just replied back, I assume this is not for me, correct? <laughs> and he goes, yes, sorry about that, Bryn. <laughs> yeah, I love it when LinkedIn experts are emailing us saying, do you need help with your LinkedIn? Uh, I don't think so. I'm amazed. I have, Absolutely. There's a company that keeps calling me. I've had four salespeople call me in the last month trying to schedule time and I've seen this product. It's like a CRM and they hook it into your LinkedIn account. So every time you connect with someone, it puts them into your CRM and then you start emailing them from your CRM. It's like, that's not ethical. They do not want to be on my email list. They did not they opt did in. Not. So I'm going to ask you a question about ethical. I, when I connect with someone, send them a little note. I have been on the border on whether or not this is ethical or not ethical. I've been doing it. Here, I'm going to put in the note that I give them. And then I want to hear from you guys. I mean, I don't think it's not complete. It's like borderline. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me see. 
Oh, it's not gonna, hold on. It's too many words, it limits me here. Uh, let me do this again. Uh, I have too many things up in here. <laughs> This is currently my, thank you for connecting with me on LinkedIn. I'm not sure if you are using LinkedIn for sales, but if you are, I want to share with you some of our LinkedIn messaging templates. They can have a big impact on your business development efforts, and they have to opt in, right? So if they look at those, they've got to opt in to get it. Good networking, Brent. P.S. I will also add you to my LinkedIn email tips, so please look for those. So I yeah. tell them that I'm doing it. And about one out of 30 will say, please don't add me to your email. Sure. I appreciate it. Yeah. And then I don't. Is that like walking yeah. up the well, line? In the strictest sense, you need to have a double opt-in where people are happy. You know, they are doing the signing up. I mean, we, we know this. Mm -hmm. And I, and this is just me personally, because I, I've I've been turned off by email newsletters because I was getting so many and quite a lot of LinkedIn contacts were just adding me without asking me. Yeah. So you you are yeah. stating what you're doing and so that's great and to improve it just a little bit I would ask the question as well in that email. So yeah, give them an opt-out. If you out. prefer not to, yeah, let give me them know. an opt-out. I like that. I actually really like that. Yeah, I give them an opt-out be because then they won't, and then they, feel, feel... they won't feel like, oh, my God, I've, I've just been added to an email list, you know, right. when they get the first email coming in. So, so at least you're giving them the option to opt-out. Do you have it automated where they right, automatically done. go into email system um no uh okay. i export and import every week but if someone says please don't add me i immediately jump into constant contact and i um right put them as a like don't mail so even though they get uploaded mm -hmm. they're already in as a do not mail there's not enough of them there's probably you know three or right. three a month maybe that it matters i mean or i'll forward it to my assistant and say you know please yeah so that th this notes. is where actually nimble was really useful i don't know if they still do it but there was a there was a i found an app that either or nimble did it i can know nimble did it nimble allowed you to add it to mailchimp um, so any new contacts you had in, it automatically allowed you to export it to a list inside MailChimp. And what was cool, whether they still hmm, are allowed good. to do it or not, that. whether they still have that facility, but that was one of the coolest features. Well, so when people links lost their API, yeah, the LinkedIn did. Nimble did too at the same time. So my guess is, yeah, and they say everybody did, but do you know how many people are really accessing this API? Like, I, there are a couple of things out there. I'm not going to say what they are, but there are definitely things that are that mm -hmm. have to be a accessing API. Yeah. yeah, in order to do what they do. Yeah, including yeah. like Hootsuite and Buffer. There, I mean, and those are big ones, so I don't feel like I'm throwing anyone under the bus because mm. LinkedIn knows about them, but they are accessing. But it's in LinkedIn's benefit to have more content shared. Yeah, they're pushing so content they're to LinkedIn. They're not pulling content. But they still, I think, I could be wrong, I'm not a developer, but I think that they need a the API to do what they're doing. API, yeah. yeah. It may not be the pulling information API. It may be the enough information to push. <laughs> yeah. But we know lots of, uh, I know the owners of apps that have invested a lot of time and money. I think we all mm, use yeah. one at one point or another. 
that are yeah. accessing API for sure, a hundred percent. There's no way that we that we well, can send may, automated it may messages. Not have a very long shelf life now that Microsoft owned them. Yeah, LinkedIn's been getting better at catching a lot of those people. Or oh, let's talk about oh, that. Yeah, the yeah. thousand mark. That was interesting. Speaking of. Yeah. yeah, so that's been like a rule forever. And I know some people, they capped it. Like I think Vivica has been at 30,000 for a long time and she has to delete people in mm -hmm. order to bring new people in, I believe. Um, but there mm -hmm. are some people like Steve Berta. Yeah. You guys know who he is? So supposedly was the number one most connected person on LinkedIn. Um, and as of July 18th, mm -hmm. we'll oh, they, they, they remove some. Um, they're removing everyone from 30,001 on are now uh, well, fair followers. But, yeah. yeah. Well, so here's the thing that I think, and I think if you're there, there are reasons for certain things, but I think if someone has grown their network for years and years and years, it's a little icky, mm. I think, to take it away. If you if you grandfather people in and say this point forward, anyone that hits thirty thousand, we're going to mm -hmm. do this. It's different. Um, my friend Bridget Hyacinth, hi, I can never say her last name. Hy mm. Hyacinth, I think. Anyway, amazing writer on leadership. Had I don't know how many fifty thousand, and and mm. she, people love her. She built it authentically. She built it based on people that engaged on her her blog posts. I mean, she'd had hundreds of thousands of readers to it. And like, she's getting screwed, really. I hate to use that word when we're recording, but she's getting, yeah. like, they're, they're sticking her. And I think, like, so I think that I, I understand what they're well, saying. Well, you're, you're a celebrity, that, aren't you, when I you think, get to those numbers, I feel. Well, then no. make her an influencer. She's not, right? But if you look at, I mean, she stopped for a while um, blogging on LinkedIn. She published a book. She did a, and then she came back. I think she was really frustrated with them for a while. Mm -hmm. But there is no other platform that does what LinkedIn does. So she did come back. Um, but I do think, I mean, there's so many more advantages to having a connection versus a follower. But here's the piece of LinkedIn that's really, really broken, that if this got fixed, it wouldn't if, bother me as much. Go. My, it, my, if I post something, I have, I think I have eight, 18,000 total. I think I have 14,000 connections wow. and 4,000 followers. Very few of my followers actually get notified right. when I really? publish something. Well, it will go in their newsfeed. Really? Surely. It, no. But it doesn't go in their notifications. But here's the thing: if I choose to follow someone and not connect with them, right. it's because I want their content. There is no other yeah. reason why Correct. I would follow them. So 100% well, of your I followers think should what, get a notification. What is wrong? I mean, even on Twitter, right? You've got followers and you're following people. You can look at those people, <laughs> right? You could put those people in a list so you can look at their content that they're publishing. The fact that you have no facility to see who your followers are is crazy. Yeah. No, you can see who your followers yeah. are. I'll show yeah, you. I've seen that. I haven't. Well, yeah. how easy is it for people yeah, to yeah. find it? I look at it all the time. It's, it's buried. buried, but it's there. Um, I'll send you the link. It is definitely so, buried. If if, uh, but because it's not obvious and you have 4,000 followers, those 4,000 people are not able to easily click a button and look at your content. Right. I wonder if it works right. like Facebook. Like if you're friends with people but you don't look at their content or like like it for a while, they kind of drop off your time. Oh, light. yeah. There's got to be that algorithm there for sure. So I wonder if LinkedIn's doing the same thing. So if I start liking and commenting, I was doing that with Bob, actually. He was posting a lot. And I was liking it. And he was like always number one in my news feed for a while. Then I stopped liking and sharing his stuff just to see. And he did drop off. But I didn't get notifications. 
No wonder I see I see you guys all the time. I'm like, wow, we have the best team. They're like always a top on the top, and that's because that's yeah. what I'm engaging with. That's funny. Okay. Yeah. So if you click on that, but I don't get notifications that you post. Brent. So it will take you. I know what you mean. No, I don't. You do or you don't. I don't get your notifications either, but you are at the top of my. Um, at, yeah. So at the top of my newsfeed a lot. So if I look, so if you look through here, all all the people, all your followers are on top. And until you get to the bottom of your, and then you'll start to see first degree connections. But if they don't say first degree uh, connections, they're you. just your followers. So it's kind of like Pulse. We subscribe to content we want to see. So if I subscribe to your content, I want to follow you. I want to see your content. So they should That's show right. it. Yeah, but they're not. So we've tested this. And so I know like my husband gets about one out of three times that I post, he'll get a notification. And I know because the first thing I do is I post and then for legal reasons, yeah. we get on together to look at his account to see yeah. if I have a notification or not. And I don't, not all the time. One out of three. So what was happening, people were complaining they got too many notifications. If you have connected with 10,000 people, you were getting all these notifications and it was, it was actually sending a message for a while, wasn't it? Yeah, but yeah, and, that's and thought, I actually thank God. stopped the message. You know what? I apologize. Yeah, I it's have time to anyway. We're, I didn't realize we're I have a time. call coming in real quick. Thank you. Thanks for Take care. Bye. See ya. Okay, let's wrap it up. Okay. Yeah, that's just we could talk about this every day of every minute. <laughs> I, a, I just have this really quick thing to share. Sure. Because I mentioned it on last week's show. Uh, you weren't there, so you won't know what perhaps was said. I On the LinkedIn app, something crazy happened. You know when you personalize an invitation through the app, you have to press the three dots right. on somebody's profile, top right corner. And then it says, include a message to name in brackets optional. And then it says, example, we know each other from, it's kind of in gray, and you then can type in your message. Then the button at the top said, wait for it, it said, invite without message, right? So you're getting a personalized box, and they were still putting invite without a message. So I was sharing this with everybody last week going, this is mad. This is crazy. Why say invite without a message? Right. Then it changed back to send invitation. So they've changed it. So I'm delighted like, they've done that. Sounds like a little bug. <laughs> well, it wasn't a bug. Somebody did this intentionally. Somebody's got a sense of humor here and did something really crazy. And somebody spotted it and went, yeah. what are you doing? Right. <laughs> it's like... And then I've been looking, and I'm sorry, I have been paying attention. I just wanted to tap through these LinkedIn advisors questionnaire. Yeah. And it shows a map of the USA and says, where are you located? Yeah. And it has a button that said outside USA. It then gave me a couple of more questions. And then the result at the end, I'm so sorry, you've been declined. Oh. Right. So I then went back in it again and changed because there's a question about volunteering. So I changed the answer on that. Still said outside USA and it still wouldn't let me through. Then I went back in and said, I'm in Florida. And then I got the whole thing. So it's not available outside of the USA. Basically. Why don't I just say that? Say not available at this time. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, I'm now at the, you know, take a few minutes to do this further questionnaire thing. So yeah. any tips on what I should be saying in that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I'm supposed to only be like five minutes a week. They want our in uh, input. So maybe they're going to send us surveys. They didn't really oh, say much okay. about it. Okay. So, well, let's see what happens. I'll, I'll fill it out and uh, see where I get to. There's supposed to be a community there that will have 
postings that we can comment on too and post things, but that okay. wasn't active yesterday. Yeah. Great. So stay tuned. Okay, okay. everybody. Okay. We're here every Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern. And what time is it there, Michael? It's now, f well, it's 4 p.m. British summertime is when we're on. Great. So we'll see you all next week. SocialSellingWednesday.com. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Ted. Take care. You too.